Hello and welcome. In this video, we are going to learn how we can query product from our database and we will return it here. So maybe I can work on the table also, but I don't know how long the video will take. If you are really serious about making money, so this is not important. You will watch video until the end of it and you will learn something. So in this video, you will learn how you can use the practical example that we learned in the previous video. If you haven't watched it, make sure you do because it is very important. You learn about Node and how you can query product like in a bulk, mul like multiple arrays here. So let's start dive deep into the code here. Before I do any other testing, what I can do is I can open the test link in a new tab. Oops, not in incognito. I will open it in a new tab so I can test it a little bit. Currently we don't have this route, that's why it shows a 404 page. Cool. Now what I can do is I can come here and I will re define a route for myself. What I can do is I can just duplicate this one and I will say if someone go to the test URL, the route name is going to be test, do all of this stuff. Currently, we have access to the shop, which is the authenticated shop here. And this is going to be the sitting. I don't need the sitting. I just need the shop for now. And instead of this one, I'm going to return, let's say data. Let's test our URL if this is working or not. You refresh it here is the data okay cool everything is working fine now i have access to the shop now using the shop variable i can query all the wish list i have if i come to the sql pro this is my database wish list inspired now if i go to the wish list currently i have two items here which i have in the wish list now what i'm going to do is i'm going to query both of them based on the what shop id here okay cool then based on the shop id i can use it so it is going to be easy so what i will do is i will just copy a snippet here i will come to my code paste it here i have a variable it is going to the wish list uh, class here or the wish list table in the database it is going to check where the shop id is equal to shop.name you know shop.name was in the database that we have so shop id is equal to the name of it name is going to be this one which is unique to every store i'll come to the code and we will order it to like descending based on the updated app because the person who just removed something and added again that is like the field that updated at will be updated so based on that we are going to query the product now you see this error here you can just say import the class if you don't have this class importer which is an extension i think what it does is it is going to add this line at the top. So you can just manually write it. Cool, now you have access to the wishlist. This is all the wishlist you have. Now, here is the thing. If you do have access to this information here, product ID, product ID. Now what you can do is you can grab them, all of this ID, and run your GraphQL query to query all of this product from database. Easy, right? Let me show you how we did in the previous video. Here's the example. You put your product ID here, product ID here, and then you will run your query here. It is very easy, right? So the important part is here, what is this string here? Now in GraphQL it is important because I think the G stand for get by ID, and it is going to say what you are going to query. Either it is order, or it is product, or it is variant, or whatever. So you can specify here and then the idea of it. Now I have to make my data look like this. That is the first thing I am going to do. So how would you do that in PHP? First, this is important because if I don't have my data like prepared like this, I cannot run any GraphQL request. So that is the first thing I am going to do. Now I'm going to define a variable called variance here. And the variance is going to be an empty array for now or whatever you can call it, you can call it, let's say I call it list, because it is also a list. So what you can do is, you can look through all the items here, and push them inside this array with the string you have. So here is what you can do. You can use the uh, for each in PHP, and then the for each is going to accept the, oops, this parameter, Inside this one, I'm going to push here. Now, how I'm going to loop through this? I'm going to loop through the wish list data here as a 
let's say item or whatever name you can find it now what you can do is inside this one as you know it is going to look through each item inside this one you can like easily say list is equal to or i don't know if you can say list is equal to something because in php you have an array push if you know about this one or not but in php you can use array push to push a variable to an a list or an array so i can use the array underscore push and now this is going to accept the variable that you want to push to is going to be list let's make it plural because list is going to be a lot of them now the second parameter is going to be the value you are going to push to them now you know how you are going to specify it so i will come to the code here this is the first part of it and we will plus this to like the id that we have here it is going to be item dot id so i hope it makes sense to you because you know we have the shop dot list which have all those data for us now all we have to do is we have to specify the id of it so it is going to be slash in php you can just put it inside this one using dollar sign you can specify the variable it's going to be item and again i will go to sql pro what is this product underscore id that's it now you will have the product id here and it will push it to the list you have here now let's return the list and see how the list is going to show for us i will return it now coming back to our app refresh it here is the list we have it is very easy right this is the data i need so once you have this data you can just directly put it in the node here and it will return all the product for you now the rest is going to be easy so here is how you can do you can define a variable called query here and let's use the escape operator here you know you can use the escape operator the good thing about this escape operator is that you can like you can literally write uh, double quotation inside this one single quotation or anything you want so you can come here go to the next line you can do anything now this is going to be your query so how the query is going to look i'll just copy it from here if you don't have this one make sure you do have installed this graphql app which is very nice and handy now i'll paste this one it doesn't matter if you have extra space and instead of this one i'm going to pass my variable which is the list here as i said if you are using php and you you can use this escape operator you can specify the list here sounds very easy and simple so let's indent it a little bit because it doesn't look very clean so this should be fine for us i hope i didn't miss anything yes i copied every like this bracket here and everything is uh, just fine now the next step is just to run your graphql request like how you would do this one you learned that in the previous video but if you don't know about this one you can check the documentation of shopify laravel app here as i said in the previous video oh did you notice like my name will become in the search results like for the first one because i'm the only one who make video on uh, laravel and shopify so i will go to the username of the author and here is the basic if you haven't watched like previous videos this is how you can find the documentation you can go to the graphql and scrolling down here are some example like they have api then graphql now for us we are not going to use api we are going to use shop so you can just copy this one this line here you can scroll down a little bit and i'm going to use shop now in here i'm going to use oops i forgot to put api then you can use graphql now in here you can accept two parameter like you can pass two parameter but the second one is optional you, you don't have to say string now we pass the query and this is going to give us all the product I hope it works so let's see i am going to uh, put it or i am going to return it here i will comment this line and see what it is going to return i will save it 
now I am assuming like it is going to run this query for us using the graph function and it will return the product for us let's refresh it mmm string conversion it is like interesting when you add this one here it will directly put those data here now the last step for us is to I don't know how to say this one I think you can encode this one using JSON encoded so you will come to the data that we have here inside your graph let's just put it here I can just say my list or whatever you can name it equal to and you can use the JSON in like encoded or just on the encode then you can pass your list here what this is going to do is this is going to encode your data that you have here and now you are going to pass my list here I hope it works let's save it I think this is how I did in previous app I had so you refresh it and this time you have another one API must return a relational database okay cool, cool 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 this is like the mistake you might see okay if i come back a little bit to the laravel shop for you, as i said in the previous video the documentation may not be as readable as possible but if you go to the usage they have a basic example here shop api rest or graph so if i come to my code here do you notice what i missed here there's bracket here so it is a function it is not anything else so shop is not the function but API is a function if I save it for now don't worry about this error that you see refresh it for now now you see another error graph will must be a type of a string so now what is this issue if you see this one these are like some common issue let's revert it back to the double quote and see what it is going to do also there is a PHP uh, function that will convert this one to a string for you but it is not a string so you save it for now finally you refresh it and here is your data so the reason I don't cut this part of the video is because you have to learn how everything is working and this is the data that you have for now and this is the data we requested it is going to show you everything about your request how long it took and which information you requested and I hope it has been informative and the video is going to be longer like that's why I'm going to finish the video here but in the next video you understood how you got those data and how you can display those data here and the table so that is what we do in the next video thank you for watching